Let us do a few more examples or exercises on streams. Um, so first let's recap zipping, the idea of zipping, where we um, take two streams and we pair each element uh, pointwise. So we go through each element of S1 at the same time as we range over every element of S2 and we should return if you have a stream E1, E2, E3, E4, dot, 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 and F1, F2, F3, F4, dot, 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 then you get the first element of each, second element of each, pair the third element of each, and so on. So we've implemented this before. And in fact, here is the implementation. So um, how would we go about and enumerate all the elements of a stream. So enumeration is just um, an operator that given a stream, it should return the index of each element. So on the zeroth position, you will return a pair with zero and then the value, the first element, and one in the second element, and two in the third element, and four in the third, uh, four in the third element, and so on. So that's what we would like to do. Um, there's two ways to go about this uh, exercise, right? One way would be try to build this by scratch, you know, from first, without depending on any other constructor. Uh, and maybe try to do that. So this is mostly an exercise for you. It's not really for me, right? So I would like you to try to do this from scratch. And what I will show you is how to implement stream enum or stream enumerate um, by using previous operations that we've learned, right? So we've learned zipping, and zipping has this structure where we have two elements. So which other stream could we think that we could zip together so that we would get this value? So on the left-hand side, we have the input stream. On the left-hand side, we have zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. So what other element is on the left hand side. So what is this stream that goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on? Yeah, it's the, if you want to think about it, try to maybe pause the video now, try to come up with a solution. Otherwise, I'm going to continue. So the stream on the left hand side is the natural numbers. So you can think of the enumeration of a stream as composing, zipping a stream between all the natural numbers and the elements in S. So let's try to do that. Oops. Okay. Copy paste the ex exercise. I actually don't like that, right? I wanted to write it as such. Uh, and now what we want to write is uh, we could, so we have this, so now let's write stream enum stream so define enum takes a stream what it does is it zips what the naturals is the naturals that i wrote yes naturals second thing is going to be s right um and now What we could do is, I want to replicate this. So here on the left hand side, you have um, position zero, position two, position. So this is these are the even numbers. So one thing we could do is define stream s to be um, the enum of even numbers, which takes a stream enum of even numbers. Okay, uh, and now if I do enum, enum, I should have um, this test should pass, right? Because I take the even numbers on the left hand side, I'm going to enumerate it. So I'm going to have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for each element of the uh, uh, even number, which actually maps to the previous exercise I did in the last video. So if I run pow2, 
I want to call this stream zip. Okay, and it worked well because it didn't crash. If you don't believe me, I can put a two here. And as you can see, it expected a one. So here we should be seeing a one. Okay, awesome. So this is just to give you an idea that we can, um, once you define these combinators, then building more interesting streams becomes very simple. Um, so in this case, I just did this a zip of naturals and streams. And this same idea applies to lists, to, sorry, uh, yeah, operating on lists. And you can build a, a library of these combinators and then building lists becomes very easy. Okay, so next, let's try to implement this exercise where we want to um, filter out elements from or keep elements in a, a stream and removing some elements out of it as well. So what we would like to do is um, something like this. Let me write um, greater than 10. So this is the stream filter. So I only I want to show I only want to keep, um, yeah, I only want to keep all the elements that are above 10. Okay. So it's going to be 10 greater than something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste this. I'm going to rename this by GT10. GT10. So in this ex exercise, what I want to do is I want all the natural numbers, but starting from a certain number. In this case, let's say starting from 10, right? So what I'm expecting to show to, to have here would be 10, would be the first element, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay. Um, I think that's the idea, right? I want to keep exactly. Okay. So now let me define stream filter takes a predicate uh, where is it yeah takes a predicate and then a stream and what we do is um, i'm going to think about it and then i'm going to show you in the slide a comparison between an implementation of filter and then in for lists and then a one for uh, streams to side by side so that you can see exactly what changes are deemed necessary to go from one version to the next? Uh, just to showcase that these are in fact very close to each other. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to, um, do I want to do some conditional? Yes, I don't want to recurse over it. I want to recurse over it, but there's no base case because this is a stream, right? So in this case, what I want to do is I want to check if the next element, which is stream get. So maybe I get the stream get. Define LM would be stream get of the stream. And then if uh, to keep, usually that's what we say. If it's to keep, if the element is to keep, then what we do is we do a cons of um, the element and a thunk, right, of stream filter, right, because we want to recurse stream filter to keep. Um, actually, I'm going to copy paste this because I'm going to need it in two places. So this is going to be define new stream. It's going to be stream a uh, thunk with the stream filter of to keep. Uh, oops, can't find the K. Okay, to keep uh, and the new stream is going to be stream next of S. Okay, stream next, right? That's what I called it. Yes. Okay. Um, and then what I want to do is do I want to keep the element? If so, then return the new stream. Right. Otherwise, I just want to return um, the new stream 
But note that if we were to do this, okay, so what is the new S? The new S is going to be a thunk. But at this point, what we need to return is either pair, is a, it has to be a pair, right? But a thunk is not a pair. So we need to somehow convert this into um, the pair. How do we do that? Well, by calling it. Okay, this is very important note, uh, thing to note. So first I'm gonna run it, it's gonna pass, right? But I'm gonna remove this so that uh, if I don't wanna keep the element, which is gonna be the first 10 elements, uh, then I will return this without calling. So the continuation, which is a thunk, and I will get an error, okay? Okay, and I got an error multiple times. So the kind of error I get is I get car on line one, five, six. So let's look at that, one, five, six. So here, basically it's in, inside this function stream ref. Uh, what does car, well, it's probably stream ref or something. Ah, it here, new s. So I'm expecting a pair, okay, yeah, here you go. The problem is I'm expecting a pair, of course, because a stream starts with a pair. It's always pair and then procedure, right? Which is the thunk of the next thing. Um, and what we have is a procedure, right? What we want is a pair. So how do we get the pair that is inside that procedure? We call it because it's a thunk here. Okay, so we want to call it here. I hope you understand this. This is very important. Will very, be very extremely important in your homework, um, homework three, because this is w basically what this is forcing you to think: is when do I want to evaluate, and also the return values being returned. So stream filter again has to return a pair, and here you were returning a thunk, which is a different value. And how do you get the pair from it? You have to evaluate it, right? So. One thing that it, that I would like you to think about is, okay, so what happens, let's think about the two most um, basic cases, right? So we have a case where we do lambda and we want to keep everything. So if we want to keep everything, we want to say true, right? If we want to keep everything, so now I want to keep all, right? If I want to keep all, and I get the first four elements of keep all, what do you think will happen? Okay. So what do you think is gonna happen if I wanna keep all? If I take the, the first four elements of this stream that keeps all, well, I should return the first, um, four elements of naturals, because those are the, what we're, we're filtering. So we're filtering naturals and we're gonna keep all naturals, which means in the first five elements, I'm gonna get the first five elements of, of naturals, right? Okay, so now what I would like you to think is, what if I keep none? So what if stream filter, so this is which elements to keep, and I say I don't wanna keep anything, okay? And now I wanna do this. Instead of keep all, I want to say keep none, right? So which element do you think is going to be appear here? So let's think. We have all the naturals and we don't want to keep any natural. So internally, what filter is going to do, it's going to take the natural. It's going to see first element. Do I want to keep it or no? Is, am I going to send it outwards? And um, we know that it's going to return false, which means no. So what filter is going to do, it's going to do a recursive call. It's going to say, okay, you don't want this one. Let me look at the next one. Next one, do you want this one? And lambda false says no. So, okay, you don't want that one. Let me go to the next one. So you're always grabbing, coming here on this else side. Do you want to keep this element? No. Okay. Recurse right? Because of this. So recurse. 
Do you want to keep that element? No. Do you want to keep that element? No. And you loop and you loop and you loop and you loop and what do you think is going to happen? It's going to hang. Right? Which means when you're building streams or when you're handling potential infinite data structures, whenever you have an unguarded recursion, which is what's happening here, because you're, you're evaluating the thunk, which means it's the same as, you know, if you want to be explicit, would be the same as having this, right? So this should work as well. Let me comment it out just to convince you that this indeed works. Okay, let me see. Okay. Did I break this? Let me see what I did wrong. Ah, okay. So if I want to keep all... Ah! This is true. GT10. Okay, so this works. Okay, then was it hanging here? See if I understand what's going on. Ah, it's not. It's not hanging. Oh, maybe I forgot to save. Okay. Uh, okay. So let me go back here. So I, I removed that that caching just to make things a bit clear. So what's going on here is, whenever you do a two keep, you're you're uh, delaying evaluation. But whenever this hits else, you are not. You are doing a explicit recursive call. So because there's no guarded evaluation here. It means that stream filter has the potential of hanging. And the example that hangs is exactly this one. Okay, as you can see, it hangs. I could wait here for an hour, it would never stop. Okay. It's just a key yet of, of function of utility functions such as stream filter. Okay, so we're done uh, with this. Uh, this is an example. Now in this slide, what I'm showing you is how to map a list version of list with a stream version of list. And please use this to kind of guide you through the examples that appear in homework, uh, in homework three. Um, and now what I would like you to think is, um, maybe think about examples such as drop one element of the list and I have a, a quite a big list here um, stream ref I've already implemented but there's stream interleave stream merge interleave where you take one element of each stream this is actually going to be uh, one of the exercises of homework three stream merge uh, also shows up there stream drop um, merge you want to take you know e1 e2 it's basically a generalization of zip where you don't take cons, you just use uh, a function f to kind of say how you want to combine e1 and e2. Uh, stream drop just ignore, skips the first n elements. Stream take is uh, provided in your uh, test cases. Um, okay, and in the next slide, we're going to talk about evaluating expressions, which serves as uh, a primer for the last part of homework three.